Well, hello, everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to our extravaganza on online MBA programs. If you have interest in an MBA and you want to stay in your job and not quit and keep earning a paycheck, hey, what's wrong with that? But you still want the MBA to learn the business basics and then some and maybe accelerate your career either in your uh, existing company, maybe in your existing industry, or in a few cases, people use online MBAs to entirely switch careers. Um, but if you want to do any of that, and maybe this is even part of your New Year's resolution, you need to be here. Uh, we're going to have uh, all the best programs in the world. And today we start off with our first panel with three excellent programs uh, for you to think about. Uh, let me introduce my three panelists first, and then we'll get into a really good and lively discussion. And incidentally, uh, if you hang around the last 15 minutes of our one hour online, we're going to be answering your questions. And you can simply put them in the chat uh, or in the uh, question box uh, throughout our uh, seminar here. Uh, so we can either get to them uh, during part of the seminar or even at the end uh, for sure. So let me introduce without hesitation, Indiana University's Kelly School of Business, Sarah Wagner. She's Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management uh, for Kelly Direct. Um, we have from Auburn, Jim Parrish, who's Executive Director of the Full-Time and Online Graduate Programs. Welcome, Jim. And we have a very familiar face from Florida, <laughs> Naz uh, Erenga, who is the Director of Admissions. Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Thank you. So, so let's, let's start with the basics. And Jim, let's go with you. Uh, when did you first go online and how has the program evolved since it first went up? Uh, sure, John, and thanks, thanks so much for having us. We're happy to be here. So our, our program, we, we, we pride ourselves on being one of the longest uh, and players in the distance education space. So we began our distance education platform in the late 80s. So 1989, we began uh, sending out education. We actually utilized VHS technology, and we would mail out VHS tapes, which... Oh, my goodness. Maybe, That's what I thought. I was going to say, what, were you sending tapes out? <laughs> exactly. We had, a, we had a one large room that was very, very warm, and it would record tapes over and over again. And, and thankfully, we don't do that any longer. So... Uh, our, our program has evolved to where, as technology has evolved, so is the way we do our education, and we've been streaming online uh, since around 2010 exclusively. But, you know, we, we pride ourselves on being, you know, as a land-grant school, our mission is to take education to the people who can't get to it, and that's expanded the reach of the Harvard College. So uh, we've been in the space for over 30 years now and trying to get better and better each day. And Sarah, I know that Kelly Direct is also one of the early pioneers in online uh, degree education. Uh, you got your start in what year? In 1999. I think that you have the three oldest players in the market here today, because I think Florida, you came online at around the same time. So yeah, our MBA uh, started in, in 1999. And I think the, the biggest thing for having our MBA through the Kelly School Business, um, so known for business education for a long, long time, uh, but really kind of solidifying ourselves in the online space early on, um, taking that full-time experience and kind of morphing it into an online uh, entity. And then throughout the years, I think the biggest change, you had mentioned kind of how we've changed over time um, in very recently. So in 2019, we actually relaunched our program's curriculum. So we did an entire overhaul. I know you've done a lot of writing about our curriculum, John, and really focusing on putting specializations and kind of customization options within the MBA. Um, so that's what we're most proud of right now is that we took what uh, the product that we already had that was fantastic and been in market uh, since 1999 and then really gave it a, fa a facelift, a total facelift, uh, adding our specialization options. So now we have seven specializations uh, along with our core MBA curriculum. Right. And I believe you have an average uh, 10 electives in each of those specializations as well. We do. So half the program now is elective based um, so that you can choose a major in one of those areas or you can just take uh, all of your elective courses if you're not quite sure what you want to choose. Right. In Florida, as uh, Sarah mentioned, Naz has been at this a long time as well. I don't think you were sending out VHS tapes, though, right? 
We actually were. We moved from VHS to DVD to iPods to iPads to, you know, laptops. <laughs> and then we moved everything uh, online into our e-learning management system. So when, did you, um, when was it founded, the program? 1999 as well. So Ooh, exactly the same year. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, you know, when we started, I mean, actually, I would say that, you know, the format was designed and curated for that busy working professional in mind. So we kind of, you know, went away from our full time curriculum that was meeting Monday through Friday and and launched our what we call professional MBA programs. And so this online program, when we launched it in 1999, we were able to deliver a flexible format for that busy working professional. And over the years, you know, we've we've modified and made changes to make the, the program that much um, more flexible and a richer experience for our students. And and just some of those key things is when we first started Started, we were a hybrid program. I know John and I, we've talked about this and even in our evolution of, of um, knowing one another, we've moved from being a hybrid program where we used to require, you know, quarterly campus visits to now, you know, delivering it in the most flexible format, uh, you know, you know, feasible for that busy individual working in different time zones and having different schedules and different things pulling at them. So, you know, and, and I think that, that to Sarah's point, it's we've been kind of also not only changing the curriculum, but being able to add tons of co-curricular opportunities in terms of professional and personal development and career coaching to, to make that experience um, similar, but also as enriching for that busy working professional as it would be for a full-time candidate. Yeah. Of course, at the heart of this for all the pioneers in the business is the dramatic changes in technology. I think in particular, the last five years, the technology has really come such a long way. And obviously Zoom is the most obvious example that many people have um, you know, practice with, and we're using Zoom right now. Um, but the advances in technology have made online learning so much more accessible and so much more comfortable. And the other thing that we have, of course, is, you know, I'm a digital immigrant, but there are digital natives out there who are in your courses, uh, who are incredibly, you know, comfortable with technology. They work uh, remotely in many cases, or they, they work with teams that are in all parts of the world and they use technology to communicate with them. Uh, and, and so it's sort of a more natural thing today, more than it ever has been when you're sitting down waiting for the mail and waiting for that tape to come and the post office guy to show up. <laughs> um, and I think one of the one of the interesting things, of course, is uh, the introduction of live Internet classes. Now, at Warrington, do you do you, every course has a live Internet classes? No, in fact, all of our uh, lectures are pre-recorded, um, ah. and so students are able to download their their lectures at their own pace and convenience, and watch them, re-watch them, fast pace or or slow slow the uh, the roll, if you will, with the uh, the you know lecture content, so they can sit there and really take that time to absorb or reabsorb that that content. So they can watch it asynchronously at any time that works for them. We've just created a, a structure of what should be watched and when. Got it. Uh huh. So, so basically, you keep track of them on the basis of their assignments and their their um, their activity on the on the, your site or on your virtual campus. Let's put it that way, and uh, and and can nudge them when you need to. Yes, and luckily I'm not personally the one involved with that, but but our faculty <laughs> and our student affairs team they they do the nudging. Yes. Now, Jim at Auburn, do you have a uh, uh, live internet classes or not? So, so we're the same way as Florida. We are more of an asynchronous model as well. We, the students can uh, watch the classes live, the ones that are the live lecture capture. Uh, but we also have a, a learning management system that students can access their, their classes. We're, we're doing two modes now. We're doing uh, the live lecture capture still, but we're also uh, producing content in our studio we have here on campus that's being delivered uh, every semester. So all of our core classes are now being offered every semester to meet the demand of our growing online program. So, but it is, it is asynchronous because like Indiana and Florida, flexibility is, is really key for the yeah. online learner. And so having the chance to download later, um, watch it at your convenience at the location of your choosing doesn't mean you have to be space and place based to watch your education. So that's another flexible component that really find our program attractive. Right. 
in. I know that Kelly has uh, online uh, live classes, but of course they're also recorded so that if for any reason you can't attend, you can always watch the recording just as you can at, uh, at Florida and Warrington, of course, be, in, in Harvard, because um, there aren't, aren't live internet classes that you're required to have to be there. Now, Sarah, do you have any kind of requirement on those live internet classes? So we, I would say that we have a little bit best of both worlds in that uh, asynchronous and synchronous because the courses, each course does have a weekly live session, it takes about an hour and 15 minutes uh, per course per week. And we encourage all learners to attend those live sessions. Um, we make them highly interactive. So we moved away from the lecture format and more towards um, using those uh, internet tools, those uh, learning management system tools or other things like Kahoots and Team, Microsoft Teams. And we kind of incorporate all sorts of different uh, learning options within those courses so that you're doing collaborative Google Docs during that, you're getting team time um, within those live sessions. So they are um, very much recommended. And actually we found that our learners, although they are busy working professionals, uh, the majority of them come to those live sessions because they absolutely love being able to network with their peers in the courses and with their faculty. Um, our, all of our faculty teaching the courses run the live sessions. So you're getting one-on-one -on -one time with your faculty member uh, in each of those, you know, at least for an hour and 15 minutes a week, you're uh, right there face-to-face -face in front of them via Zoom. And then again, doing collaborative work with your team. Of course, another way that online programs tend to be more flexible than your traditional MBA programs is in the scheduling of uh, when you can start. Uh, most of these programs have multiple intakes a year, not just one, as full-time residential programs tend to have. Uh, Naz, how many uh, intakes do you have per year? So for our online uh, program, and I'll actually say we have a unique, um, you know, a unique differentiation between those who already have a business degree versus those who come from any undergraduate major. So in essence, we run our online one-year program three times a year, as well as our online two-year program. So in total, we have six starts of our online formats, but it's divided between those who already have a business undergraduate degree and don't have to repeat the core business classes versus those who are coming from all and any undergraduate major. So if I already have a business undergraduate degree from an accredited school, I can fast track your MBA and complete it. How quickly? 16 months and 32 credit hours. There you go. Otherwise, it's how long? It's 48 credit hours and 24 months. And it does start fall, spring, and summer. Yeah. So there you go. That's even more flexibility. Sarah, how many intakes do you have? We have two intakes. We have a spring cohort and a fall cohort. Um, and the program is 54 credits, no matter what your background, business or a non-business, we kind of have a core model where you move through together as a full group, either in that spring cohort or that fall cohort. And our program typically takes around two to two and a half years to complete, uh, but we do give flexibility. You can have up to four years for those who just want to do one course at a time. Um, but I've seen people complete in two years or even sometimes a little bit less if they're willing to kind of go lockstep through the courses that we have available to them. Right. Good. Thank you. And, and Jim, how about at Harvard? How many intakes do you have? So we do two as well. We do a fall start and a, a spring start. We are a non-cohort uh, for our online MBA. So again, that flexibility is what we're looking there, looking for there. So uh, our program is 39 credit hours and it takes about uh, two and a half to three years to complete that degree. The students have a window of six years to complete the degree. So if there are other demands on their time, uh, professionally or personally, they can slow down or speed up or take some time off, whatever works for them. And uh, we have other, other cohort models in the, in the Harvard College to look at, but our, our online is uh, two starts a year. Okay, good. And give me a sense of the class profile. Who's coming to the program? Uh, how large is, is your uh, enrollment? Uh, do you have any limits on your class size? And do you re require or not the GMAT or GRE for admissions? Jim? Yeah, so um, I would say there's a lot coming to our program right now. Um, there's a high level of interest, which is good. I think that there's a great interest for all of our programs uh, to find and, and help the students realize that an online degree is, is, is a great choice right now during this time. So for our profile, we're, we're sitting around about 550 totally enrolled students in our program. 
Um, in our two intakes, uh, we're looking for about 300 new students uh, in, in fall or spring, some mixture of that. Um, we, our average GMAT right now is about a 600 with a GRE of about a 306. Uh, we are looking at our GRE and GMAT waiver policy. Um, I would say that in the spring for the fall 2020 admission, we had more of an emergency policy mm -hmm. on the GMAT GRE waivers, but we've settled into more of a, a concrete plan for the fall 21 class. So it is a tiered system. We look at the years of work experience you have as well as your uh, undergraduate uh, GPA and, and how you earn that degree. And based on the combination of your GPA and work experience, there's a sliding scale uh, beginning at two years of work experience and about a, a 3.5 GPA and there's ranges uh, after that. So we are looking at, at finding ways for students to continue and reach their goals because it is still challenging to complete uh, the GRE and GMAT. So we wanna work with them as best we can. So we've set up some, some procedures to make sure we can help them reach their goals. Right. And I should point out that uh, a lot of schools are uh, granting waivers, uh, not only in the online space, but in the full-time space and the part-time space uh, as test centers closed due to the, the pandemic. And it took a few months for the uh, standardized test makers to create online versions that you can take at home. Uh, there was a lot of difficulty in, in just even getting the, uh, the, to take the exam. That's still true in certain parts of the country and certain parts of the world. Um, and then there's the whole issue of a lot of people don't want to go to a test center, even if it's open and risk the chance of catching COVID. Uh, Naz, what's the class profile look like at Warrington? Yeah, so uh, we, we aim to bring in about 45 students per cohort. Um, there's, there's, you know, we want it small enough so that everybody can get to know one another, but also large enough to maximize a network. Um, because we bring in six cohorts per year, you equate that to about 270, give or take, as new online MBAs that start with us annually. Um, we too are, are in that kind of bucket of we're currently waiving the testing requirement, but that means that, you know, on the admission side, we're spending a lot more time understanding what uh, a person's professional background has been like, what are some key indicators from their professional and academic backgrounds that will be predictive to, towards their MBA success. Um, and, you know, I think that after uh, having three semesters or three intakes of waiving the testing requirement moving forward, we'll have data, you know, on, on kind of the success rate of all of our students to make sure that moving forward, we can determine whether we're going to continue or discontinue, if you will, the standardized exam requirement. But, but up until, you know, uh, waiving the requirement, we had an average similar to, to Jim, right about, you know, a, a 600 with our cohorts, um, average GPA of about a 3.3, 3.4. Um, and then, of course, you know, our, our GRE was right around a 305 um, when we were requiring that. And so I think collectively, when, when we look at applicants right now in the COVID environment, that's obviously changed. And we're, I think, all in the same kind of bucket of trying to better assess in, a, in still a holistic manner. How can we you know, uh, look at key indicators to ensure that we have that high retention and graduation rate? Because you know, we've historically had that graduation retention rate over 93%. So that's top of mind. We, we don't want to just bring in students. We want to bring in successful students. Right, of course. And uh, I don't know if you have a sliding scale the way Jim does, uh, accounting for a GPA, undergraduate major, and amount of uh, full-time professional work experience. I mean, I know a lot of programs, if you ha already have a CPA or a CFA, uh, you're good to go. If you have a master's degree, you're good to go. If you have a quant work on your tr undergraduate transcript and you've done okay or better than okay, uh, you're usually good to go for a waiver. Uh, Sarah, I know that uh, Kelly has been uh, a, more of a stickler over the years for GMATs and GREs, uh, but I also know that in more recent years, you've been granting uh, more waivers than you had in the past, right? We have, exactly. So I think that COVID was a really, that was our, the game changer um, probably for all of us. And just, we needed to, to be more understanding of, of what the market was going through and, and uh, really not wanting to force anyone to do something they weren't comfortable with. So yes, we have gotten um, far more liberal than we ever had been in the past, although we had been opening up a few more waivers than we typically had. 
We usually were looking for those with 10 years of professional experience uh, and then those with at least a 3.2 GPA. Um, 3.0 is probably our, our minimum there. We've opened it up a little bit more, um, particularly for those with lower years of professional experience. Um, so GPA requirements still are hovering around the same mark, but uh, really those with fewer years of professional experience, that's when we'll start looking again uh, really tightly at the resume and what has their leadership experience been like? Have, has, uh, can we see career progression? Um, even if there's fewer years of experience, have we seen that there's been some movement, some growth within their uh, professional development in those fewer years? So we are looking at all aspects of the resume, including uh, any undergraduate courses, what was the bachelor's degree in. Uh, so we're being uh, far more attentive to kind of all of the different aspects of the criteria now. Um, and definitely we have been offering more waivers than we have been in the past. We have a little bit of a larger program, uh, had already had a little bit of a larger program prior to uh, kind of the COVID spike in interest, like Jim was saying. So we currently are running at about 1500 students in our program. And we usually between our fall and our spring groups are looking to have a group of around 400. Um, and that has gone up with uh, recent intakes due to, I think, obviously interest from COVID. Um, how, how much that will last though and how much the interest will be there, I think is the question. Um, our students are around 33 years of age and our GMAT, uh, the scores that are coming in are strong. So although our typical average has hovered around 640, 650, um, we're actually riding a little bit higher than that with our recent intake. So, um, so those who are testing are, are doing quite well, even if they're needing to do the at-home option, which I know there have been some glitches with that. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, those who are coming in do seem very committed uh, academically. They've been strong and, and certainly professionally, which is what we're really looking critically at. Um, they have strong professional experience. And I, I will say just for, you know, our applicants out there would be applicants, you know, studying for the GRE or the GMAT, particularly the quant, uh, does help you prepare to just go in and, um, and make it a little easier, the quant work. It's not like the quant work is, is a massive mountain you have to climb in any MBA program. It's really not. Um, but, you know, if you've been removed from school for a number of years, you haven't been taking tests, uh, you're not doing calculus on a daily basis or analytical work. Uh, it, it helps you get back into a frame of mind. And believe me, I hate standardized tests more than anybody. So uh, so there you go. But it is true that schools are uh, adopting far more liberal uh, waiver policies in light of the pandemic. And this would be, that's another good reason to frankly, uh, to go and get your MBA right now. Uh, because, you know, once the pandemic is over, uh, I think schools will be less liberal about uh, GMAT and GRE waivers, although there may be some permanence to these changes as well, uh, particularly if the, you, you find that your students are, are uh, easily completing your, their assignments and their work and, and you're finding that you can pay more attention to other elements of the application to give you that assurance that they're gonna do well on the quant uh, in the program. Now, obviously, uh, besides the flexibility that every online MBA program affords a user, uh, one big issue here is price. Uh, to go to an online MBA program is a fraction of the cost of a full-time residential program. The biggest factor is opportunity cost. You don't have to quit your job. Uh, you can balance your job with your personal responsibilities and still get the degree and get a good degree and a good education. Uh, but then there is also the, you know, the base tuition and fees. And in all three of your cases, I think these, these three programs in particular are highly affordable, uh, high value programs uh, for what you're going to get. What, what you, let's just go through the base price of each of your programs and tell me what makes, what you think makes your online program unique or unusual in the marketplace, Jim? Yeah, we, um, you're exactly right. I think the, the price point that all three of us uh, have here is that very competitive price point. I think it goes back to our longevity in the space. And I think some of the newer programs that you see entering the market, they're having to create something that, that we've kind of already established. And so I think that gives us 
all a, a leg up on, on other company or other, other schools that may be just starting from scratch. So the price point for us here in the Harvard College, and we're at about $900 per credit hour. So we do bill you for the hours that you take. Uh, we have a, a confirmation fee of, of $250 that once you decide that Auburn is the right school for you, uh, you pay that to confirm your seat in our class. So that plus the hours that you take is the, the cost of your degree. There are miscellaneous fees going alongside with, with textbooks, but as we all know, those can be rented, those can be borrowed, those can be PDFs. I mean, that, that technology is a whole different conversation that we could have too. Mm -hmm. But I think the price point is something that, you know, we, we're seeing a, an almost um, instant ROI. You know, our average incoming student is, is seeing a, a salary of about uh, $70,000 and leaving our program at just over six figures. So the price point of the value they're almost getting their money right back through promotions and other things that they're doing. And so we hear some great stories from our alumni that say, as soon as I finished or before I was finished, I was offered a, 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 a new job, a promotion, and that had to do with completing your MBA. So I think the investment in that we try and get our students to see is that you're going to invest your time, your money, your resources in something. But if you invest in yourself, this one can really pay you back quickly. And, and we're all are sitting here today, we know that our, our students and soon to be alumni will get the value back. I would say that, that our price point is a competitive place for us to be. Uh, we're also offering some great dual degree opportunities uh, with the MBA and some specialized masters that you can also do online as well with information systems and finance, industrial systems engineering. And this fall, we're opening up our brand new supply chain masters that you can do a dual degree with the MBA. So I'd say in, in the marketplace, if you want that generalist degree that an MBA provides and gives you all the touch points of business, you can, but adding that, that dual degree for about you know, two more semesters at most in the online space and 54 credit hours total, that's gonna allow you to be that, that generalist and specialist that can make an impact in the organizations, the one you're currently in or the one you might go to once you achieve your degrees. So Jim, do the math for me. I, I don't have a back of the envelope calculation here. 90 bucks a credit times, how many credits required for the uh, MBA program would come to a full cost of roughly what? Roughly 35,500. Yeah. So 35,000 US uh, and, and half of that. So yeah, it's a great, it's a great value. Um, again, we, we find our students are, are really picking up on that and they see that there's no drop off in quality because the faculty you're getting, I've been teaching in the space for an average of uh, eight to 12 years. So they're teaching the full-time students and the online students. So you're not, the, the discount is not there with the on, on campus program, but the online has, a, has a, a differential tuition, regardless of residency, you get that same price. So, so that 35.5 for it all in um, is really kind of a great place to be and, and really almost get that back once you find yourself two, three years down the road in terms of salary increases uh, for sure and paying that back off. And I, sh I should just say uh, that uh, my wife's cousin uh, completed your program online for an MBA not long ago and or Eagle. was attracted to the school for its great brand name, Auburn University, as well as the affordable price. So there you go. Uh, Nas, right. <laughs> what, what's it look like at, on your end? I know you have... Uh, the one year, the two year, so it gets a little more complicated perhaps. Yeah, so um, our two year program is right under 60,000, um, but that's like 59, 807 and 48 cents. Um, so we'll just round it up to, to 60K. Um, and then the one year version is uh, 10K less, so that's right under 50,000 yep. uh, for that full credit hour. Um, and, and I would say that, you know, when, when you're talking about the differentiator and talking about the value problem, position, you know, it, it, it could be said that all of us on this call today, you know, all these schools represented, we're, we're strong, you know, strong faculty, strong curriculum, AACSB accreditation. I think then the, the, um, the differentiator for the Warrington, you know, brand and the UF MBA is boils down to the fact that we have so much co-curricular opportunities. Um, so beyond that, that classroom and paying for the credit hours, uh, you know, our students can do certifications such as Excel training, Six Sigma, Lean Six Sigma. They can, you know, uh, participate in our uh, networking events. They can have access to our business career service 
resources that I know we'll cover here momentarily. Um, but then we have like a speaker series. We do uh, personal professional development days, storytelling. So there's so many things that, that you do uh, co-curricularly. And if that's what you want to participate in, of course, all of these things aren't required. Um, but, but I would say that having that world-class faculty, that fantastic curriculum, those are things that, that we, we, I think, all uh, have that common denominator with. And so now it's just kind of going above and beyond what else does that price tag include? And it's all those other great facets as well. Right. And Sarah, Kelly Direct, what's the, what's the price tag and how do you see yourself differentiated in the marketplace? We already talked about the specializations, the large selection of electives. Um, what else? Yep. So our price is $74,520. So we're just under $75,000. And really, I think that one of the critical differentiators is, and, and I do agree with Jim and with Naz, that, that we kind of all have that, that full package. But something that I feel really sets Kelly direct apart is our level of graduate career services. So all of our students are paired with a one-on-one -on -one career coach. And that career coach is available to you throughout your program. And our graduate career services coaches are online MBA specific. So they only work with our online MBA students. They are familiar with um, the level of experience, professional experience that our students have, the types of positions that they are going for, that they are really looking at C-suite level positions. These are not entry level professionals. So we really wanted to make sure that our career services were differentiated. And then the other uh, key component of Kelly Direct is really that personalized connection. So we have the um, Student Leadership Association where you can get involved, like Naz was saying, in, in kind of uh, outside of the classroom types of networking events or speaker series or things like that. Um, but also just the touch points that you get with your faculty and your fellow students in your live class sessions, like I was saying earlier, um, really kind of sets the program apart. And then in addition, uh, we have our uh, Kelly on campus experiences when you come to campus, not uh, during a pandemic, uh, but in normal times, I would say, uh, when you come to Bloomington, Indiana to do our Kelly Connect uh, case competitions. So those case competitions really provide a ton of networking, both with faculty and with your colleagues in the program. And we have moved those into a virtual environment and we're hearing some really positive feedback on kind of what the virtual um, kind of immersion experience looks like for our students. So really the, the connections that you make in the program are um, extremely tight. And we've, we've been told it's as if they were it back in undergrad that they feel like they've uh, gotten tighter with their colleagues and their faculty in our online program than they did even in their undergraduate on-campus experience. That is a good segue into the things that I think would-be applicants uh, wonder about, right? A lot of would-be applicants wonder if, in fact, do they have to make sacrifices in terms of the connections that they will make with their classmates and the faculty, number one. Uh, number two, can they really balance this program with a very busy professional and personal life? Uh, how much do they have to give up uh, of their life uh, to make a go of this because these programs are not easy peasy. They're rigorous, serious uh, degree programs. And then third, uh, you know, what really will be the career outcomes? Um, how will this impact my career, uh, my ability to move forward, to take on more responsibility, to essentially have a more fulfilling professional life? Uh, and I think those are the three big things that applicants think about when they start to consider, okay, should I do it or should I not do it? So uh, Sarah, since you already tackled uh, this aspect of connection, uh, I think a lot of that connection occurs through those live internet classes, the connect weeks. I think the, uh, the typical MBA uh, who, who gets an online degree from you has to actually go to two connect weeks, although you can go to more if you want. You just have to pay if, if you want to go to more than the two. Yep. Uh, there are these global immersion trips as well. Um, is, there, is there any other connecting tissue <laughs> that's involved here? You mentioned clubs uh, just like NAS did with the uh, the co-curricular activities and any other things that we're missing here in terms of how you try to, to, to get these linkages that 
that may be more elusive for many students who aren't showing up every day on campus? Sure, there's a number of different ways and a number of different types of connection, right? So we've, we've kind of covered how you're gonna connect with your faculty and your courses and, and in your Kelly on campus experience. Uh, but then when you're connecting with your colleagues, we offer, like I said, the Student Leadership Association where those are a little bit more um, formal events where they might bring in a speaker. Then within those, they might have a Women in Business Wine Wednesday is a pretty typical event that they have where they just get together for networking and chatting and uh, commiserating about their experience, uh, you know, having a full-time job and going through life and going through an MBA. So there's different types of kind of connection that you need to have. You may just need to vent with your fellow colleagues. You may want to actually get together for professional development. And then also you, you don't necessarily just wanna stick within your affinity group. So we offer things like our Global Connect Night. So Glo Global Connect Night focuses on regional connections. So um, on Global Connect Nights, we do those twice per year and those are geographically based. So all of our Kelly Direct students say in Boston, all come to either the same restaurant or during the time of COVID, all the same Zoom room and get together and just chat and make connections locally. So we want to make sure that they have opportunities like that as well. And then we offer uh, immersions that are more um, industry specific. So we may do say um, in the past, we've done a marketing immersion to Chicago where anyone kind of interested in the marketing field uh, either currently or looking to uh, career change into that could do a marketing immersion trip, a uh, long weekend with some faculty uh, to organizations and visiting marketing departments and C-suite executives uh, at organizations throughout Chicago. So we're trying to provide different ways of networking. And then you also mentioned kind of what, what's that ROI look like and, and is this all gonna be worth it? Because I agree with you, it's intense. It's the, the courses are hard. Uh, you know, the curriculum is difficult. Uh, is it worth it? Well, just like Jim was saying, um, we also are hearing from students, 64% of our students have told us that they've gotten promoted either well in the program or within six months of graduation. And their average post-grad salary is 122K. So they're certainly um, finding value from the degree, both while they're in the degree and immediately upon graduation. And then Kelly also has our alumni network, which is about 120,000 living alumni. I believe we have the largest alumni network of any business school. And truly Kelly's are all over the world. And, and we're always looking to help our current students make connections with Kelly alums. Right. Now, Jim, Jim, what do you guys do to create a sense of bonding among the students and the students and the faculty? Sure, I, I think, um... Pre, pre pandemic, we were doing some some on campus orientation sessions, a lot of our online is going to be elective opportunities because again, that flexibility and non cohort, it's going to be something that I'll, I'll elect to go and be a part of that. With the pandemic and, and not coming to campus or getting together for global immersions or or live events, uh, we did create recently our our new War Eagle way which is our our online. Um, orientation course and within that orientation course you're getting to meet the new students that are joining this with you so there's been some connectivity on some chat rooms and and then some unofficial meetups in certain cities where they have, have found commonplace we've had um, some students that happen to be in the same organization that didn't know it and they've met up in, in, in their lunch breaks to talk about classes and those types of things one of the things that even during the pandemic because a lot of these events have gone to a virtual environment are case competitions and so we actually have brought together folks from our full-time MBA, from our executive MBA and online MBA. We formed one team that can compete for the Harvard College at a, at a case competition. And so that connectivity across our other programs does grow their network as well, because even though they may have a deli different delivery model, they're all earning that Auburn MBA. So connecting them to, to helping them understand I'm really part of something bigger than myself. And not only am I able to leverage this online cohort, but I've got connectivity for the full-time MBA as well as our, our very successful executive MBA. You know, one of the things that we try and, and I think we, we've had some more counseling sessions with students is helping them understand what this is going to be. I mean, the fact can't be lost that this is graduate business school and mm -hmm. graduate business school is, is a time commitment. It's an investment. And we, we say that if you take two classes per semester, you're going to 
watch about six hours of class per week and need to add another six hours a week of pre and post class to make sure you stay on top of stuff. So it's not uh, for the faint of heart. It's not for, for people who may not be ready to commit to an MBA. So we're trying to have those early on conversations where they realize that this is one of the biggest decisions you might make and, and it's going to change your life. It's going to help you professionally. It's going to help you uh, engage at certain levels that you may not have had before. You know, we're seeing, um, like I said before, in about, you know, 24% increase in salary within 18 months of graduation. That number jumps to close to 45% increase at three years after graduation. So there is some, some real numbers that it's, it's, it's taking place. And I, I think one of the things you mentioned earlier, John, is you're not, you're not giving up a full-time salary either to do these online degrees. And I think that makes the online MBA a destination for a lot of people and I think that's one of the things that makes it so unique and, and a great way to spend your time and invest your resources. You're, you know there's a great chance you're going to see a good ROI on your, your time in the program, but you're not losing and, and giving up that salary and also maybe the majority of your personal life that you also want to maintain too. So I think that's something that we're seeing a lot of success with. And, and I think that's why people are, are running towards our programs, all of us on the screen and part of this event because they see that true value they're going to get by maintaining and seeing an, an online MBA is a true way to earn that degree. True. And, you know, the other aspect of connection is uh, the work that is done in teams. I'm mm -hmm. sure that many of the assignments that are required by the program are tackled in, in teams at Harvard. Is that correct? That's correct. And, and we have a, a, a final kind of capstone course. It's our, our final consulting class. And we actually combine full-time and online students together to work on a live project for a, a source client that we source for the students. And that's one of the coolest things that we do because they're taking everything in application up to the point of their last semester and applying it to a live case. And so there was a time where we would all come together and, and celebrate the accomplishments. And that was the only time the students are required, the online students are required to come to campus is for this track course. But we're also knowing that we can also do this virtually. Now, they still wanna come here and we, and we want them to come to campus, but we also know that right now is not the best time. But we're planning things in the future that, that make it more meaningful in ways to reconnect to campus. We just have to get through where we are right now for the health and safety of our, of our faculty, our staff and our students so we can get past this and move on to where we are, uh, not maybe the way it used to be, but a new and, and better way of, of engaging online students with our campus experience. And I know I'm hoping that with the fall, it's, it's not necessarily going to be a total back to normal kind of situation, but pretty close to, uh, close to normal, I would hope. Uh, now, Naz, uh, you spoke earlier about the co-curricular activities in the program, and I would imagine that that's a very major part of how uh, connections are made at Warrington. Um, can you go into a little more detail on that? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so, you know, it all starts at the beginning for orientation. So we have students that uh, join our Salesforce community. So they get to, you know, start making those connections with their classmates who they'll share a cohort with. Then during orientation, whether it be pre-COVID in person or during COVID and potentially post-COVID, more of an online uh, setting because we've been able to see how well we can master and mimic that um, situation. Uh, we have been able to do networking nights um, even at the beginning of part of the orientation is bringing mm -hmm. everybody together for introductions and, and doing some icebreakers. And, and so it all starts with getting to know your classmates. Um, beyond that, you know, we do have Office, office hours that our faculty do for our students on a weekly basis. Usually those are focused in nighttime weekends to, to accommodate that busy working professional. So knowing that, you know, similar to, to what Jim was saying, that so much of what the curriculum is based on teams, you know, I would say about 50%, if not more, of those deliverables are going to be team-based. So you're going to be working pretty heavily with your teammates. And, and that means probably weekly, you know, check-ins with your team, uh, whether that be, you know, Zoom, 
FaceTime, Skype, whatever the case may be, whatever technology uh, you all as a team agree on. So you have that constant contact with your faculty. You have the constant contact with your you know, larger cohort, with your immediate team members. Um, and then similar to, to what you know, both Jim and Sarah were talking about is that we do networking uh, nights. We do networking events, both focused specifically on the cohort, we do uh, across the all enrolled MBA students, uh, we'll do networking events. We've done geographic uh, networking events. We usually partner with our Gator Club. So in fact, when I was in San Francisco with uh, one of the, the Poets and Quants events last year, I met up with a few current students and connected them that way. Um, and then beyond that, we, we you know, give opportunities for students to come to campus for what we call transformation weekends for professional development opportunities. So they get to not only meet some of their, their classmates again in person, or they get to meet other uh, students enrolled in our full-time executive or weekend professional formats. We offer global immersion experiences uh, three times a year. And due to, to COVID-19, we are doing, instead of traveling, um, we're doing virtual global consulting projects. So that's a great opportunity for students right. to come that way. And then, um, you know, we do city, like I said, city tracks where we'll have our students kind of meet others in the same geographic location, meet with uh, C-suite executives, learn from different companies. Um, we have the opportunity to go to DC for our Washington campus. It's a Washington consortium program that um, we have uh, students uh, take a business policy course or a healthcare policy course so they can meet other UF MBAs that way rather than coming to Gainesville. They can go to DC or, or do it DC virtually at this point. Um, and, and so, you know, there's so many different points, um, you know, that as a student, you can network with your peers. I mean, when we were bringing students back to campus, um, you know, of course, that that face to face interaction for orientation and graduation is a key, you know, uh, component of making that experience. And then all of the pieces along the way, coupled with our one on one career coaching and all of the other recruiting events that our career coaches and our business career services center does as well uh, to, to make this, you know, once again, this experience that much richer. Great. That's a really good explanation for uh, how people can make lasting connections in an online program. Um, so the other point that I was mentioning earlier uh, in a discussion was, oh my God, how demanding is this going to be of me? Am I going to be able to do this? Uh, or am I going to lose my job, get a divorce? My kids are going to hate me because I won't have any time for them. Generally, I should just tell you that uh, I, I think the average number of hours an online MBA student would spend in an online program is between 15 and 20. Is that right, Naz? Yep, that is exactly right. Because that's the last thing we want is for you to oh. you know, go through all of these other, you know, um, um, issues in your life due to just an MBA. So it, it, will, it will be lots of time, energy, sweat equity. But at the end of the day, it's doable. You might have a little less hobbies going into the MBA that you, you know, compared to, you know, pre and post MBA. But, but most certainly it is doable with average 15 to 20 hours a week. Right. Sarah, you find the same? Yep, exactly. 15 to 20 hours is, is spot on. And we also find that students need to be aware that coming into this program, they won't be in a bubble. They will be doing this program with others. That also means that you're working not only around your own schedule, but you do need to work with your teammates around their schedules as well. And we have students from across the world. So juggling different time zones and things. So it's something we want students to think about coming into the program is you will be needing to time manage your own time. And you're also going to be working with a lot of others throughout this whole program and just being ready to kind of figure out how is that going to fit into my life and how do I kind of time manage with my team uh, is just something to, to be aware of. And we actually start out all of our new students in a group project in their very first course, uh, not only for just the team building and, and getting to know people, but also to, to get to know, oh, this is what this is going to look like for me. This is how this is going to need to fit into my life and what the next two years of my life is going to look like. But definitely it's doable. Uh, and all of our students uh, come out of the program saying, I'm glad that I spent the time that I did. Uh, obviously some sacrifices need to be made, but that's, that's what goes into getting your master's degree. And Jim, you, you'd say 15 uh, to 20 as well a week. Yeah, I would, I would echo what um, Sarah and Naz have said. I also think that you're going to have uh, need to have some conversations with your support group around you, spouses, others that are going to earn this MBA with you. And that's a, a real thing because there's going to be some things that you just 
can't get to or things you're going to need help with. I mean, we've had students tell us, you know, uh, people can't miss you while, while they're sleeping. So it, for him, he, he got up early in the morning and did his coursework or late at night while uh, his wife and children were still asleep. So he, he made time. And, and we also counsel a lot of students that, you know, the hardest part is choosing to start because once you start this program, it just becomes an extension of who you are. You, you do give up some other hobbies. You do give up some things. But again, it's, it's an investment. And so when you give up, you know, other things, you can focus and, and this will be for a season. And once you complete it, you'll be happy on the other side. So it, it is something that it, it takes a good bit of time. It is worth thinking about before you commit to something, but also having those key conversations with others that will be helping you get through this is really crucial. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. And I should say, you know, when we say 15 to 20 hours, it's not like it's all uh, tough work is a lot of fun in meeting new people who are smart, uh, who want to improve their professional lives, just like you. So in many cases, you're meeting some like-minded people in terms of what you want out of life, but you're also meeting a far more diverse group of people from different parts of the country, if not the world, uh, and listening to very different perspectives and viewpoints given where they're coming from. So a lot of this is incredible fun, a heck of a lot more fun than binge watching on Netflix, okay? So, so <laughs> the 15 uh, to, to 20 hours a week is an incredible investment, but it's a good investment and you're gonna get a lot from it, which then leads me to the career stuff. Can this really help my career? Now, uh, we've already had um, Jim and Sarah mention the increases in pay and responsibility through promotions that uh, your online MBA graduates get. Um, I, I wonder also how much, you know, introspection the program provides an individual about their career. Um, a lot of people are in places where, you know, they may feel they're stuck or they may feel, you know, I made some wrong choices and I'm going to use this MBA program to get me on a right path, uh, or maybe they, they love where they are and they just want to advance faster and get more responsibility. But Naz, what, what kind of handholding uh, and guidance do you offer those uh, students to help them with their professional and career development? Yeah, that's a great question. I think actually, you know, it, it's a twofold part to this response in the sense that not only, and I think you said this at the beginning, John, you know, you're coming in with a group of, of cohort mates, all who are, you know, working professionals, and you get to leverage your immediate classmates as your network. They are the eyes and ears for future opportunities for you. They also are the soundboard of ideas when you're looking to explore different, you know, um, industries or functional areas. So, so I think that that's a great component of, of what that value add of a network can provide. But above and beyond that, our career coaches, you know, they, they take a holistic you know, approach when they're looking at candidates and they say, look, you know, what is your career goal? Like, what do you see yourself doing it? And largely an MBA is about learning what other industries and functional, you know, opportunities, functional jobs are out there. So, so a lot of it is not only building infrastructure, and in fact, we have a, a career coaching module. So it's like a course. So you're enrolled in that uh, career coaching course for the duration of the program. So you can go back, listen to various modules on things such as resume building, mock interviewing, you know, how to uh, update your LinkedIn profile. And, and so you have all of that content, but then you also have the one-on-one -on -one coaching. And that's where we have that customized approach. Um, and, and of course, as you said, you know, we have people who are just looking to grow within their organizations. We have people who are looking to change their trajectory altogether. We're looking at, you know, we have a lot of um, veterans or active duty who are looking to make that transition. Um, and, and of course, those who have that entrepreneurial spirit that are looking to make those connections to, to you know, go off on, on and start their own new business. And so I think all of that, um, you know, with that one-on-one -on -one coaching, with that network, with the mentoring. So if I have, you know, a student who is looking specifically to get into a, a role with XYZ company, you know, we have a vast network of UF MBA alums of, of you know, about 11,000 that we can say, who, who is in you know, who's an alum of the program? Who can we connect you with? You know, and whether that be in terms of a company or a functional area, there's a lot of mentorship that, that can happen also in 
addition to what our career coaches can provide. All of our career coaches and, and you know, um, Sarah, I know you said this, that you have a dedicated career coach for your online students. We too have dedicated career coaches for each of our um, kind of student populations. And, and, you know, these individuals, they all have real world experience. They were all, you know, in HR roles, they're hiring directors. So they know what companies are looking for, what soft skill sets, what, what are the you know, things that, that a resume should include to, to bring your resume to the top of the list. So, so these are all things that I think, you know, although, although, you know, one would hope that all career centers offer, I think that it really takes that unique perspective of asking the right question and figuring out what a student wants, the value proposition out of that MBA program to make sure that even those co-curricular events such as you know, career services can align with that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I think something that you said at the very start of your answer is something that I've heard confirmed by many students. In other words, you're sitting there with your classmates. Uh, you may have worked in a group with them. Uh, you get into an informal conversation about your career and there's there's someone in your class who has a job opportunity for you and bingo uh you know this is the natural outcome of of real networking from people you know from people who uh, you respect and admire and uh and the magic happens because you're in with a group of people who are all trying to improve their professional lives and careers uh, and they're all looking out for each other. So that's a really important part of it. Now we're running out of time. We did answer the GMAT GRE waiver question in our conversation earlier in the conversation. So I don't need to ask that again, but I wanna ask my favorite question, okay? So if I had the chance to sit down with your students, here's the question I would ask. What was the one thing about the program that you went through that you found the most rewarding, uh, the most memorable, um, the most kind of telling about uh, the experience for you? Sarah, what would they say? Well, under normal circumstances, every one of our students would say Kelly Connect Week. Uh, the time on the Bloomington, Indiana campus uh, where we do our case competition, we have a domestic client for the first week and an international client for the second uh, case competition that we do. And it's just an out of this world experience. Our students just absolutely rave about it. Um, during the time of COVID, I would honestly say the personal connections, the people, um, because that's really what everyone's been craving right now is yeah. personal connection. And so just being able to chat with your faculty member, although it's via Zoom, but chat with that faculty member once a week, look them in the eye, ask them questions, um, engage with your colleagues, it's the time that you are getting to know other people and really getting to engage with them and talk about big ideas. That's, that's really what it comes down to right now is, is life has become relatively monotonous and mundane as we're all stuck in our houses. Uh, and so this is your opportunity to broaden your perspective is that once a week time to just get out of your own head and chat with others and think about you know, big picture problems. So really, I think it's the personal connections. Uh, and then, of course, we're looking ahead, just like Jim was saying that they're doing too, looking ahead to when the pandemic is over and we can actually get back together again. Oh, we will have many events on campus uh, to welcome our alums back to campus and to uh, welcome current students to come as often as they would like, uh, because really we know that everyone's craving that, that connection and, and folks feel really tight with IU and with the Kelly School. There's something about, you know, having that connection to your um, soon to be alma mater or alma mater. And uh, so we'd let, we really appreciate having that, that opportunity to give the personal connections. Great. And Jim, is it the capstone uh, at Auburn that is most yeah. memorable and uh, sort of the singular experience for your online MBAs? I think so. I think I would say from an academic perspective that that connection with academia and industry in the program there at the very end where you're applying uh, your your skill set, even, you know, especially the online students, they have skill sets from their professional work experience, and they're able to apply those, uh, not only from what they've learned in the classroom, but also their professional career. So I would say that would be something from an academic standpoint that we would, and, and the students would celebrate. But I, I would also agree uh, with Sarah is that, that that connection, that being part of something bigger than yourself, um, and, and being part of the Auburn family, you know, it, it sounds kind of cliche, but we do view our, our students together and our university and our, our alumni as, as a family. And so once you're part of that family and you leave Auburn, 
you know, that stays with you no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you've, you've gotten to be a part of the family. So if you don't, if you didn't do undergrad here, but you got your master's here, you're part of the family and, and all the benefits that go with that. So I think that connectivity and, and being part of something that, you know, with, with all of us, we have that on campus college town environment as a residential school, but we offer this distance education component that allows you to have that connectivity as well. So I think that does separate our group here because you can't have that feel. And no matter if you got your degree online, part-time, in person, you're all part of that one family. And I think that that goes with you wherever you go. Great. Naz, your last words. What's I, I, that one memorable experience that everyone brings with them after they graduate? I think it's just the all encompassing, the MBA whole, that experience from start to finish. And, and to echo what Jim said, it's, it's you know, the having that strong break brick and mortar culture already present and weaving that into the experience. Um, but, you know, I guess my final words is it's great to be a Florida Gator. <laughs> Indeed. Hey, thank you so much. We had a really wonderful discussion. I think anyone out there who's interested in an MBA, whether it's online or not, uh, would, would have benefited greatly from it. And if in fact you're interested in an online MBA, man, you hit the bullseye uh, on everything. So, and I want everyone to know if they want more information, uh, they can go to each of your websites. They can come to our website where we have profiles on each of your programs. Uh, each of these programs is highly ranked, uh, not only by us, but by US News. And uh, really, these are these three programs should be at the top of your list in consideration set. And as, as you've listened, I think you, you gain a sense of the differentiation uh, and what you're getting at each program and how the programs differ from each other. So Jim, Sarah, and Naz, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to see you all again and uh, stay safe and healthy. Thanks guys. Thanks for having us. All right, this is John Brennan with Parts of Quads. Thanks for watching. See you later.